This CH special, The Wine Islands, has been brought to you in part by the Cowichan region, the heart of the Wine Islands. Welcome back to the Barrel Room at Winchester Cellars. There's a growing market for organic products in B.C., and winemakers are picking up on that demand. But growing organic grapes can be a massive undertaking. From the spray you put on the vines right to the posts you put in the ground determines whether the vineyard is truly organic. It is difficult enough to grow wine grapes with many factors such as weather, disease, and birds sometimes working against you. But now imagine trying to grow grapes that are 100% organic. Using an herbicide like Roundup is not an option in a certified organic vineyard. It's prohibited. That's the reality every day for Lana Popham, owner of the only certified organic vineyard on Vancouver Island and one of two in the Wine Islands. Being a certified organic vineyard, a lot of people assume it means that you just don't, you don't do much. You don't do anything, so you don't spray, but it, it actually involves a lot of things that you have to do. It's very labor intensive. Tough and a lot of work, but it has paid off. <coughs> Organic grapes from the aptly named Barking Dog Vineyard are used for wine at Winchester Cellars. 18 bricks, that's great. As Ken Winchester checks sugar levels, he is hoping for a repeat of last year's success. Well, it's tremendous. I had no idea. Uh, our Ortega last year sold out in three days, which uh, just amazed us. So um, uh, obviously we're going to make more of it. <laughs> At Godfrey Brunel, winemaker Daniel Cosman tops up the barrels. While not certified, the vineyard here tries to be as organic and green as possible. Not everything can be organic. Not everything can be pure. But if every individual and every business made a little bit of effort, you can make a big difference. Nice size cluster. There's no mildew on the leaves, front or back. This one's a winner. Paul Troop is trying to make a difference. The winemaker for Salt Spring Vineyards is using his own land to find the perfect grape. We have 70 varieties on this property in eight acres, and we're not entirely sure they'll all work. That's why there's 70, not two. The vines are specially bred by Valentin Blattner in Switzerland. The purpose, to find a varietal in this climate that doesn't require any chemical help to prosper. To me, to be involved in a new venture with something that has the capacity to change the way viticulture is done in the province and maybe even the world, it makes me excited to get up in the morning. Venturi Schultz of Vineyards also grow some of Blattner's grapes. They too believe in a green philosophy. And to us the beauty of this place too is that you can grow without any pesticides or herbicides. It takes a lot of effort but it can be done. And I don't think there are very many places in the world that that can be done. This bunch of grapes has powdery mildew. Because this is a fledgling branch of the industry. This is just another learning experience. Organic growers still rely on traditional growers for knowledge and support. And one day we're going to find out how to get a 100% successful crop out of this vineyard. And um, then maybe everybody will be certified organic. It's dreaming big and dreaming green. But as long as people support organic by buying the product, business should continue to climb. Whether it's organic or not, Canadians are buying more wine. For the first time since statistics have been kept, wine is now outselling spirits across the country. Stats Canada figures show Canadians spent almost four and a quarter billion dollars on wine in 2004-2005, compared to just over four billion on spirits. But beer is still by far the top seller at almost eight and a half billion dollars. How do you get the most out of your glass of wine? Mark Walkton shows us how to get the full wine experience. First of all, I mean, the proper way to taste is really going to be looking at the color of the wine, hold the wine up to, to light, and you're going to look at the opa uh, opaqueness or the, the richness in color. And then I want to do is I want to swirl around and get the, the um, aroma factor going. So I'll swirl around and put my nose right into it. And for me, that's the, uh, uh, that's the biggest enjoyment I get from wine pretty well as the, uh, the aroma. I love aromas of wine. I think it's incredible. And it's a really nice indicator of what you're going to be tasting. And I'll bring in a little air as I'm doing that. And it makes kind of a funny little bit of a gurgling sound. But what it does is it helps, again, move the wine around to the inside of your mouth to all the points where you want to be picking up uh, different flavor components. Most people associate wine with grapes, but fruits such as kiwi and raspberry can also be used to make wines. And the Wine Islands has seen a growth in fruit wines, ciders, and now even grappa. 
Fall harvest in an apple orchard. It is a busy time. But these apples grown on the Saanich Peninsula aren't for eating. This is a chiseled jersey, and it's a traditional English cider apple. Kristen Jordan and her husband are fulfilling a lifelong dream of opening a cidery. The first batch of cider we ever made was for our wedding. We grew from being, you know, garagiste, literally, you know, making cider in our garage to trying to step it up on a bit of a bigger scale. This is our Kiwi Solera. And the possibilities seem to be endless when it comes to fruit wines and fruit spirits. At Marley Farm, half of the wine sold in the tasting room is not from grapes, but from other fermented fruits. Well, I started off with fruit wines as a hobby about 20 years ago or, or more. And so um, when my husband decided to, that he wanted to start a winery and he wanted to do great wines, we decided to sort of, you know, put my hobby in with it. And they've become exceedingly popular. Among the fruit wines, black currant, blackberry, raspberry, and kiwi. So popular, they make three types of kiwi wine. By the time it's oak aged for approximately two years in a French oak, it actually loses most of the fruit tartness, and you're just left with this beautiful, rich, smooth, uh, sherry style wine. This is uh, grappa made from Pinot Noir. Grappa is alcohol made from distilled grape skins, which would normally go to waste in a vineyard. At Winchester Cellars alone, last year they composted 30 tons of grape skins, which could produce 100 cases of grappa, and plans are in the works to expand the line of spirits. Calvados uh, is actually brandy made from apple pumice, so it's the same idea but made with apples. And Calvados is also aged, but we're surrounded by wonderful French oak barrels, so that makes a logical choice for us, too. These barrels at Venturi Schultze Vineyards don't contain alcohol at all, but traditional method balsamic vinegar. This is the only place it is produced commercially in North America. The reason it's not made by anybody else is there's no money in it, in spite of the high cost of, of, of buying a bottle, but it's a huge investment of time and, and energy. and. But it's a labor of love that everyone in the industry shares. With endless amounts of fruit in our region, these growers feel when it comes to the future, the sky's the limit. So how does wine from this region compare to other B.C. wines and wines from around the world? That story coming up after the break. But first, red meat with red wine. Just what are the rules when it comes to wine and food pairing? We're living in a time right now, I believe, where anything goes and wines are changing so quickly the, all over the world that uh, we're discovering all sorts of fun things. So tuna, uh, white fish, bit of a red meat quality to it, so we're going to pair uh, a red wine, a light red wine with that. Uh. Here we have a lobster dish with foie gras. As a, what I've done is i paired the Venturi Schultz chicks and hens. Uh, the bubbles really help pull the richness of the foie gras um, from your mouth and, and create a cleansing experience. Our philosophy is we'll try anything, we'll try it and see how it works and then, and then and work it from there. The Wine Islands is brought to you in part by the Cowichan Region, the heart of the Wine Islands.